Hello everyone, my name is Jordan and welcome back to another episode of the Bucket Coding Tutorial Series. Today we're going to be showing custom NPCs to players and changing the skins on those NPCs. So I've created some code here uh, to make our lives really easy. You know what, I'm just going to make this a little better. Forgot to remove that little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got. So we have this NPC plugin class and this is our main class. We have uh, th a few, uh, three methods in here. We have the on command method and the show NPC method and a show NPC do all method. Uh, and you know what, I can actually add this in there. Uh, and then in this method for sh uh, show NPC, we just call npc.show uh, show player. And you know what, we can just, yeah, that'll work fine. Um, anyway, uh, on side of, inside of the on command, we check if the sender is a player. If they are, then we go ahead and create a new NPC object with their location and the uh, translated uh, color code uh, in red my name uh, and then inside of the NPC class here we have a few things we have a location object a string for the name uh, a thing called a game profile and an entity player object and you notice that's from uh, NMS now of course if you want this to run on different versions of spigot you'll need to do reflection um, or there's a guide on on spigot on how to make it so you don't have to use reflection um, but that is a little tedious so yeah, uh, but we're not going to be using reflection, so this will run on whatever version you compile it against. So just be wary of that. Let's go ahead and get started now, though. Uh, okay, so uh, let's go ahead and go into the spawn method, because this is where the action is going to happen. So uh, first of all, before we call that, or before we uh, code in there, let's go back into our, uh, our on-command method and call npc.show. Um, not show, we're going to call npc.spawn, and then down here we're going to say this.show npc to all npc. So that's just going to show the npc to all of the players on the server. Now, of course, you would have to call this show npc uh, method whenever the, uh, a new player joins if you want this to show up for them, uh, but we're not going to do that in this tutorial. Obviously, just keep that in mind when you are doing this on an actual server. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so let's go ahead and create our spawn method. So we need to go ahead and access the Minecraft server from the bucket server. So you do, you can just go ahead and type in Minecraft server. We're going to call this Minecraft server. We're going to uh, cast this to craft server. We're going to say bucket, whoops, bucket dot get server. And right here, we're going to say dot get server. And this will return a Minecraft server object. So if this is a little confusing, I will make it go like this. So we're setting this equal to bucket uh, or the craft server dot get server, which returns a Minecraft server and craft server is created from this bucket dot get server. Um, if that makes a little more sense. Okay, so now the next thing we have to do is get the world's server. So we're just gonna go ahead and say world server, world server equals world server. And we can go ahead and say location dot get world dot get um, server. No, that's not it. We need to cast this to a craft world first. So let's just say craft world. Uh, location dot get world delete that a little bit there and then to say dot get handle uh, and that'll return a world server for us so now that we have the world server we can go ahead and create our game profile so as you can see we have that object stored up here but we're never setting it up as anything so let's do that now so we can say this dot game profile equals new game profile and this is a mojang authlib um, class so you can use this on any version of minecraft without using reflection which is awesome uh, and so you can uh, you can see here it wants a UUID and a string. So the UUID doesn't matter. We can just put in UUID dot random, uh, and then we can put in this dot name. And again, we've already translated the color codes in the spawn method, uh, so we're good to go. And you know what? I'm actually going to move that translation um, into this right here, just so that we can see that better and make sure that regardless of what happens, it's always going to be translated. All right, there we go. Uh, import that or optimize it. Okay, so now that we have a game profile, the next thing we have to do is uh, spawn this uh, actual uh, entity. We're not spawn it, but create the entity. So now that we have this game profile, we can go ahead and do that. And we need to say this dot entity player, which is again something we've created in, in uh, and imported from NMS. We're going to say this dot entity player equals new entity player, and this is going to want our Minecraft server, a world server, a game profile, and a player interact manager. And as you can see, we have all of those. So we can just go ahead and import that. Uh, and then the last thing it says is player interact manager. This is super easy to say new player interact manager. And this is going to want a world. So we're just going to say location.getworld. 
Um, does it want? No, it wants the actual world. So let's just go ahead and type world server dot uh, get world. Maybe? No, it doesn't like me. This is so weird. What the heck? Um. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, for some reason I just didn't try typing in the world server. I think I might have typed in Minecraft server or something weird. Uh, but you can just go ahead and put in world server. I'm not quite sure why that didn't work. Okay, so uh, we're getting very close uh, to creating this NPC. So the next thing we need to do, and the last thing in the spawn method, is say this dot entity player dot uh, location or set location actually. And now we got to go ahead and enter some values. So we're going to say location dot get. Uh, so it wants doubles. We're going to say get x location. I get y and location. Oops, location dot get z. We're also going to say location dot get uh, yaw, I think, and location dot get pitch. Let me go ahead and make sure that's actually the proper constructor. Uh, yaw pitch, yaw pitch. Okay, cool. We did that properly. So now that we've gone ahead and created our entity player, we need to show this to certain players. Uh, so now it's created and all that, but uh, it's not going to show to anyone. So we need to do this inside of the show method that we've created, and this is very simple. So let's go ahead and do this. So we need to go ahead and say uh, player connection, player connection equals uh, craft player. Oops, craft player. Uh, you know what? We can go do it like this. Uh, so we cast the player to a craft player, and then we need to just say get handle dot player connection. And now that we have access to that, we need to send some packets uh, its way. So we're going to say player connection dot send packet new packet playout player info. I spelled that wrong. Packet playout player info. And now this is by default going to take nothing. So we need to give it some values. We're going to say add underscore player. So this is going to import this long line of uh, it's an uh, enum player info action from our packet play our, our just our packet here. Uh, and it's going to be of type add player. And I think there's also like remove player. Um, first time opening IntelliJ on this uh, profile here. Uh, where's that enum? Let's see. Uh, there it is. So we have uh, add player, update game mode, update latency, display name, and remove player. So if you ever wanted to remove a player, uh, this would be how you do that for certain people. Uh, and then the next thing we need to go ahead and specify is our entity player. And we're good. So now we've sent that over to the player. One final packet we need to say is our uh, packet playout named entity spawn. So let's just go ahead and type that out. I keep typing packet out. Packet play play out. Hold on, play out entity spawn. Where is it? Packet playout named entity spawn. My mistake. Uh, and that's going to take in type of entity player. And that's it. So now we've gone ahead and shown the shown the player. Um, our NPC, we've created and spawned our NPC. Uh, so let's go ahead and build and run this plugin and take a look at what it, at what it does. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so let's go ahead and test out our plugin here. So just typing in the NPC command. Um, oh, I know what went wrong. So uh, our NPC name here is a little longer than is allowed. Uh, and that includes the color code. So we're just gonna call it Jordan um, and then we'll be okay. Go ahead and build and run our plugin again here. Copy paste it in there. And boom. Okay. Let's go ahead and redo this here. Slash NPC. Cool. And you now see it says Jordan and there's an NPC here. Awesome. Now if I was to look like up this way, uh, it looks up at the sky and all that. Obviously you would probably want to make this, you know, look you know like this maybe <laughs> i don't know um but yeah so you will notice though that the skins here are all steves and alex and this is not really what we want because these steve and alex skins are you know really boring and so on so how do we make these skins uh show up well let's go back into our npc class here and let's go ahead and go into our spawn method and we're now going to go ahead and uh, add an argument to our constructor before we actually do that. And we're going to call this string, uh, and we're going to call this texture, and we're going to make the other string that we're going to add here. We're going to call this signature, and we're going to say this dot texture equals texture. This dot signature equals signature. And we're going to create those strings here. Private string. Whoops. Private string texture and private string signature. 
So now that we have those two, we can go ahead and change the skin of our player. Now you're probably wondering how the heck do we get those values? Well, uh, Mojang session servers is how we get that. So I have this link in the description with my UUID and you can go ahead and replace it with the uh, UUID of the skin you want. But right here, this is my UUID. I enter this in here uh, and it, go, it loads all this data here. So what we want is we want this signature so you can find it right here. Uh, there we go. So we're gonna go down here, copy that. And we're gonna update our constructor here. Uh, texture will leave blank for now. And signature, whoops, we input this value. Probably want this somewhere uh, saved or something. You can also retrieve this data um, live at runtime using all sorts of different libraries and so on. So, um, you know, you could do it that way. We're not going to because that's too much work. Uh, and then right here, we just need this value. Uh, so it starts at value and then it goes right there. Put that in for texture and we're good to go. So let's just head back into NPC and we can go ahead and change our skin. So all we have to do for this is we need to get the game profile here. So this dot game profile dot get properties dot put and we're going to say textures uh, and we're going to say new property and we're going to call this textures whoops I spelled that wrong textures and we're going to input our texture and our signature and that's it we can actually put this up when we create the game profile just to make sure this looks um, a little more organized uh, and there we go so let's go ahead and build and run our plugin now and go ahead and do this here awesome uh, and you notice the NPCs are still here. These NPCs will not go away until you remove them. So they, they're going to persist the reloads, not through restarts though. Uh, and also if I log off, I'm pretty sure they're not there anymore. Yeah, so they don't, they don't actually exist. So every single time someone joins, you'll have to show them again. But anyway, let's go ahead. Uh, let's spawn this NPC. As you can see, went ahead and spawned it. I don't know why it's spawning it with this weird head thing. Um, it seems to only happen when you do it with a skin. So... I'm not quite sure. It might be something to do with my helmet because this uh, skin has a helmet on it, but I could be completely wrong there. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Play with it. See what you can make it do. Uh, maybe Google it and uh, uh, post in the spigot forums to figure this out. I'll probably link down in the description if uh, if some if someone goes and looks up a solution uh, and comments it down below uh, to fix this stupid head rotation thing, then uh, let me know and I'll, I'll add it. But uh, yeah, there you go. That's how you spawn custom NPCs. Uh, in Minecraft, uh, basically any version of it because it hasn't changed in ages as far as I'm aware. Uh, so let's go ahead and look into how we did this. So all we really need is this NPC class here. So inside of here, we have our constructor that sets up our values. We have this spawn method. Inside of this, we get the Minecraft server from the bucket craft server. Um, and then right here, we get the world server from the locations world. Uh, and the craft server of that, we get its handle. Then we create a new game profile, which is a Mojang provided uh, class. We create a new uh, or random UUID for it because we don't care about that. And then we set up its name with color codes there. We need to remember that that can only be uh, 16 characters or less. And that includes color codes just due to Minecraft limitations. Now, there are ways to get around that uh, using scoreboards as far as I'm aware. But that's going to require more packets. Um, probably th something like packet playout scoreboard uh, change or something. I don't know if that's actually a thing, but it sounds about right. So uh, there you go. In the next line of code here, we get the properties of the game profile and we add in this uh, this texture here. Again, that Mojang session link will be down in the description. Uh, and if you want to find your UUID, I'm sure uh, the console for um, for Minecraft prints that out at some point. So just you can find it there or you can just Google Minecraft UUID searcher and you can find a good one uh, to find your UUID if you don't know it. Now, uh, then we create our entity player from the Minecraft server, the world server, the game profile, and we create a new player in a rack manager. Uh, with the world server input here and then we set its location inside of our show method we grab the player's connection for the player we want to show this npc to and we send them the packet play out player info class with the add player action and we pass in our npc uh, our npc's entity player class inside of this we uh, we spawn the packet play out named entity or not spawn but we send that packet to, uh, and we insert the uh, entity player class which is again our uh, actual npc entity player um okay so that's it for this tutorial i uh, hope it wasn't super complicated it's pretty easy to do this uh, again the head bug uh, if someone wants to research that and uh, post that uh, solution down in the description i'll pin that comment and i'll um i'll probably link it in the description um so yeah 
Uh, thank you all so much for watching. If you do have any questions, please make sure to leave them down in the description below. Make sure to join our Discord for some further discussion and uh, asking your questions. That's one of the best ways you can talk to me and ask your questions, as well as some very, very smart people in that uh, in our community. Make sure to support me on Patreon down below if you're interested in my content. Obviously, you don't have to, but it would be a great support to my channel. Other than that, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Take care.